Several years ago, there was a survey in my country that showed that 30% of people believed that the Sun orbits the Earth. Most people probably made that mistake simply out of lack of knowledge or just simply being completely uninterested in astronomy. And now, a few years later, we have the whole separate group of flat earthers, fans of different conspiracy theories, who have lots of weird ideas, especially about the Sun, its properties and origin. In today's video, we are going to talk about the distance to the Sun, break down a couple of claims that those guys make, and also find out how we actually measure the distance from Earth to the Sun. As you might know, Earth's orbit is not a perfect circle and it rather has an elliptical shape. In this image, the oval shape of orbit is of course exaggerated. In reality, it is much closer to a circle. So the distance from Earth to the Sun constantly changes, and the closest point is called perihelion and the farthest aphelion. One of the basic units of length used in space is an astronomical unit or AU, which is the average distance from Earth to the Sun. According to the statement of International Astronomical Union from 2012, AU equals 149,597,870,700 meters, or roughly 150 million kilometers or 93 million miles. Some might say, and actually do say, how can we measure the distance to the Sun that precisely? We'll get back to that later. And now let's see what those flat earthers have to say. First up, they claim that the Sun is actually much closer to the Earth, basically only a few kilometers away. But what do they try to prove it with? Well, it's this. You've seen pictures like that, and you've probably personally witnessed the effect. It is called crepuscular rays. We can only see it when the part of sunlight is blocked by something, usually by clouds. So, we observe a distinct difference between brighter and darker regions, sort of light pillars. Science tells us that Sun is pretty far away. Being that far away, light rays have to reach Earth basically in parallel lines. That is where they see the problem. Crepuscular rays that we see are not parallel. They diverge. That is why they think Sun can't be far. Well, first little thing is that when light hits the atmosphere, it gets refracted and scattered. But the main explanation is pretty straightforward. Perspective. Perhaps for many of you this image would be enough, but for some it wouldn't. For those, I have a couple of questions. Are rail tracks parallel? Yes, they are. Do they look parallel here? No, they don't. Why? Perspective. Ok, let's suppose those are not 100 kilometers long, but rather than a thousand. Would the picture change? Mm, no. A million? No. 150 million? But perspective shouldn't work with the sun, because rail tracks are horizontal, while the sun rays are vertical. For them to be completely perpendicular, the sun has to be right above our heads, and it is not in this picture. And even if it were, the perspective would still apply. So, if we lift rail tracks and point them at the sun, they of course will eventually converge in one point. If we put each rail farther apart, and even the points where they touch the ground, the angles will be different, but perspective will not go anywhere. Obviously, for those who can't comprehend this, it's just hard to put the rail track example into 3D space. They can't get that the sunlight is not vertical pillars that shoot from each and every point of sky. After all, the sun, as the source of light, takes up only the small fraction of the sky. So what else have they got? This is the second claim they make. They say that sun is really close, actually so close, that it's literally in the clouds. See? Some of the clouds are behind the sun, but how can that be? Well, of course, it's just an illusion. Of course, we could tell them that clouds are not of universal density, and some parts are dense enough to block some of the sun's light and be visible, while others aren't dense enough to do so. Very bright sunlight shines through them, and camera with its limited dynamic range isn't able to capture it. But they'll say it's just words, so let me do a quick demonstration. This light bulb is going to be our sun. And the piece of film is going to be our cloud. 
So let's turn our sun on and we can already see a similar picture. The more transparent edges of the film are completely invisible. They look like they're behind our sun, whereas the darker parts of the film in the middle are still visible. And look at this photo. Would anyone actually think that the power line goes behind the sun? They would also bring this interesting example. In the clip made on board of the plane, we can see clouds lit from below. And of course, again, they claim that sun is much closer. But this one is even more simple. The light is red, so it's either sunrise or sunset. And the name of the original video from 2010 tells us exactly that. So the sun is below at the horizon and the cloud is right under the plane. Here are some clouds lit from below during the sunset. Have they actually never seen a picture like that? Obviously, the arguments I mentioned are simply misconceptions, based on lack of knowledge and understanding, some confirmation bias and not without Dunning-Kruger effect. And even having heard what I've just said, there will still be people who will say that I'm paid by NASA or something like that. But we'll just let them be. And let us finally get back to how the distance to the sun is actually measured. Some people seem to be surprised that we're able to measure the distance without physically walking with a ruler, and sometimes it's just impossible. That is why nowadays we have the whole variety of ways and devices to measure the distance remotely – satellites, total stations and rangefinders. You might have seen something like that. They use different working principles. For example, this laser rangefinder emits a laser beam and then registers it when it bounces back, measures the time passed, and knowing the speed, which is the speed of light, calculates the distance. Before lasers and other modern tech, people used trigonometry. Well, it is still used now. Let's say we need to measure the distance to the tree on the other side of the river. To do so, we need to mark the line on our side, which we can measure directly. Let it be 90 meters. Then we measure the angles here. We get 76 degrees angle alpha and 34 degrees angle beta. So we have a triangle with one known side, 90 meters. It is side C and two known angles. We also know that the sum of angles of a triangle equals 180 degrees. So we can calculate the third angle, which is 70 degrees, angle gamma. And then to figure out the side B, which is the distance to the tree, we use the law of sines, like this and this, put in our known quantities and get 53.6 meters. The same principle was used in older optical rangefinders, for instance on warships. Like this one, which consists of a long pipe of known length, one fixed view angle on one side and adjustable angle on another. In a similar way, trigonometry is applied in astronomy. Of course, we can't just simply draw a triangle, let's say on this picture, like flat earthers do. It's just a 2D projection. We built our triangle looking from the top view. Same is here. Depending on how far the object is and what properties it has, astronomers use different ways to measure distances. One of the modern ways to measure the distance to a planet in solar system is radar measurements. The basic principle is similar to a laser rangefinder, but instead of laser it uses radio signals. For relatively close stars they use parallax. Take your finger, put it in front of you and point at something. Then close one eye, then another one, and you will see that your finger shifts in position slightly relatively to the background object. Because we observe it from slightly different points. If you put your finger closer, the shift will be more significant. And if we could move our eyes farther away from each other and have a wider baseline, the effect of parallax would be stronger. By observing the same object from distance points in space, knowing the distance between them and angles, we can calculate the distance to the object. The widest available baseline is the orbit of Earth. And this way we can measure the distance to the stars within certain limits. Because at one point parallax effect becomes too small to be useful. That's why astronomers use not just one method, but rather a combination of them. At first we need to know the distance to Venus. Let's get back to the Sun. We measure the distance to it indirectly. We basically can't use radars because the Sun has properties of the black body and absorbs all radiation we can emit. However, there were some experiments of reflecting high-frequency signals off of solar corona. Parallax is problematic as well. When we observe the Sun during the day, there is no background stars visible. 
That's why astronomers use not just one method, but rather a combination of them. At first, we need to know the distance to Venus. In the past, they used rare transits of Venus in front of the Sun. Observing it from different locations on Earth, measuring its trajectory and timing, using parallax, astronomers were able to calculate the distance to Venus. Today, we can use radar to measure it with much more precision. Observing movement of Venus in the night sky, we can determine the points of the greatest elongation, when Venus is visibly in the farthest point from the Sun in our sky. If we looked at ecliptic from above, we would see something like this. Not to scale, of course. At the greatest elongation, the Earth-Venus-Sun angle is 90 degrees. Also, we can measure this angle, and knowing this distance, we can calculate this side, or in other words, the distance from Earth to the Sun. Also, we can use the fact that according to the Kepler's third law and Newton laws, even before measuring actual distances in kilometers or miles, astronomers already knew relative distances. For instance, they knew that the average distance from Venus to the Sun is 72% of distance from Earth to the Sun. The same is with other planets. Measurement of just a single distance unlocked the way to knowing all of the distances in solar system. And knowing them, we can figure out other properties of bodies, such as their size and mass, which then gives us even more information. In addition, astronomical unit is used not only to measure distances in solar system, but also to calculate distances to other stars when using parallax, which makes AU one of the most important parameters in astronomy. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, comment down below and subscribe to our channel because we are going to make more videos like this in future.